Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. The Lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations. Halle, halle, hallelujah. We thank God for this day and for you joining in with us uh, for our Thursday night edition of House of Prayer Evangelistic Church Discipleship. I'm your host, Prophet Ron Smith, and we are dealing with the subject, Continuing in Faith. <clears throat> and I think we've been on this for a minute, but I think it's important for us to remain here because God has a directive for us. There are so many things that are going on in our world, in our lives, that can be distractions, deterrents to us uh, moving in a progressive way in faith. Praise the Lord. And I think the Lord is really uh, hitting a hammer on a nail to continue in faith. Hallelujah. There, there is, there is chaos in our world. Amen. I, you know, I don't know how people watch TV, really. I mean, just TV programs and different stuff. I don't know how you can do it because it's so crazy now. I mean, I would be like, uh, what's, what's that man that was in Sodom? Lot. The man vexed his very soul with the conduct of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Seemed like he would have moved. But that's the state of our world. It is anti-Christ. It is anti-Jesus. Uh, it's anti-Yahweh, uh, Jehovah, the one true God. They'll say God, but not the true one. Anything that stands for righteousness, holiness, purity, morality, ethics, that's being fought against. And so God has a remnant people in the midst, especially here in America, in the midst of a perverse generation. But he's beckoning us to continue in faith. Hallelujah. Do you know that there is someone who is waiting on you to get to your destination? Amen. This is a Bible study today, but I just feel inspired. I just feel inspired. There's someone who is waiting on you to arrive to your faith destination. I'm talking about that place of confidence, that place of boldness, that place of love and sharing and maturity where you can deposit in them what they lack. Oh my God. I'm telling you today, God is calling for us to continue in the faith. Not in the faith. Okay, we got to do that. But I'm talking about continue in faith. It's not like a play on words, but it's not. Continue in the faith means remain a Christian. Don't give up on your eternal hope in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about continue living your life being directed by the voice of God. Oh, man. What are we talking about now? Continue living your day-to-day -day life being directed by the word of God. Continue to live your life by the personal inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. So let's pick up where we left off. We're in Hebrews 11. And we have been talking about several of our Bible heroes. You know, Noah. He's a Bible hero. Uh, uh, Enoch. Uh, uh, Abel, the brother of Cain, uh, Abraham, Sarah. We have talked about them and we have gleaned some nuggets. 
to keep pursuing God and his directive for our life. Now, we're picking up here at verse 13. It says, Hebrews 11, 13, all these died in faith. Those names I just listed. Enoch, Abel, Abraham, Sarah, Noah. All these died in faith. Let me read it from this book here. I don't want to read my cheat sheet. <laughs> Uh, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. So number one here. God will continue to progressively lead you by faith until your time here is over. Did you hear that? All of these people that we, we read about were living their life unto death, being led by a promise, being led by a voice, being led by by a word that came from God. Hallelujah. They, uh, 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 Abraham, who, who saw the stars of heaven, who saw the sands of the sea. I don't know if he was in a vision or, you know, what happened, but how he saw the sands of the sea. And he knew that this was an image that God was saying, this how many descendants you're going to have. He took that image and he walked around through the faith of that image, not even having a son yet being old. He walked around with the hope of that image and that hope of that image was the motivating factor that kept him following God. Oh. See, so God is going to direct you. He's going to speak. He's going to inspire you through his word all the way until the time that you leave here. Praise God. Some things that God give us is so big, it's going to take God to do it. And some things we see, amen, in God, we see it fulfilled and accomplished. But God does not leave us with a limited perspective and promise that once that's fulfilled, we got nothing else to live for. He is going to continually to progressively lead you uh, uh, by faith until your time here is over. Hallelujah. And so, you know, what is, what is retirement in the faith? What is retirement in Christianity? What is retirement in the kingdom of God? What is that? I don't care if you 80, 90, 100. You are here to be guided by faith. Oh, my God. Amen. You know, some God told me, he told me that I will see my children's children at peace in in. in Jerusalem or Israel, one of them. I was like, really? And so every time the devil give me some crazy report, I'm like, man, I can't. <clears throat> Ain't time me to go yet. I haven't seen my children's children. And peace in Israel. I haven't seen that. And so that's 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 
a faith factor that is that is directing my life. And the thoughts of death and all that kind of stuff. Are you going to get cancer? Are you going to have this? You're going to listen. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit. I'm looking to the promise, and so God will continually continue to progressively lead you by faith until your time here is over. Amen. Some things that we've seen accomplished, hallelujah. But that ain't all God got for you. He told you you're going to make an X amount of dollars a year. Man, we didn't pass that. Man, we didn't pass that. That was like, man, I done dealt that. I'm, I'm still, but I, there's something else God has given me. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would have said amen. Because I know a lot of people have seen God accomplish what he showed them. Oh, my God. I remember a time in my life where just believing that I was a preacher was faith. Man, I've been preaching 20 some years. 20 something years. And so, but God is continuing to lead me by faith. Okay? Number two, how do we see this? We see this because all died in faith without receiving the tangible fulfillment of God's promises fully. They were still living their life looking to something. Looking for something God would accomplish. Amen. All right, number two. Some things God says or shows us, we are only a part of the fulfillment. Are you hearing me? Something God shows us, promises us, we're only a part of the fulfillment. When I was studying and preparing, I thought about people in ministry. You know, you have a vision for ministry, you know, to see, you know, this grand thing happen. You may only be the one that set the foundation for that. And then the people that you're training will actually fulfill that thing long after you go. Hallelujah. Abraham only had two sons. One was the promise, one was the flesh. Amen. Ishmael, flesh. Isaac, promise. He never saw the 12 patriarchs. He never saw the, the, the stars that could not be counted for multitude. He never saw that. But he was governing his life in hopes to see that. But all he was doing was setting the foundation. What was that? Birthing Isaac from Sarah. Oh my God. See? And so we got to have a, a faith perspective. Some things God shows us, we're only a part of the fulfillment. Hallelujah. And man, you may not even know that. But God uses this as a motivator to keep you pressing towards fulfillment. That's number three right there. God uses the vision, okay, or the faith promise to motivate us to press for fulfillment. Let's go back in the scripture and see this, all right? So, Verse 13, all these died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And so they had a vision of what God had promised. Amen. I kept using Abraham. But you have a vision. You see the church pews filled. You know, you see people, you know, demons coming out of people. You know, you see them throwing up in a trash can. You know, you see yourself doing things in the kingdom of God. This is a vision. You see, you know, people getting saved by the numbers. You out on Quindaro, you out in Overland Park, holding up a sign, lead people to Christ. This is a vision. Amen. But God uses this vision to motivate you to press forward for fulfillment. Now let me show you here in scripture. They saw it far off and were persuaded of it and embraced it and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. 
For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And so, so when we are really continuing in faith, we're motivated by the voice of God, by the word of God, by his promise, by the dream, by the vision, however God chooses to speak and, and, and give us faith in as many ways. But however we embrace that, Amen. You know, to 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 see myself as a prophet, man, that that was so, man, that was all the way in Alaska. In my thinking, when he first told me in the nineties, that was like, man, so far off. But you know what? Whatever God showed you, He does it in a way that you embrace it. You begin to make that your confession. Amen. You see it afar off, but you embrace it. They said here in verse number 14 that they were only strangers in this country. So, so the vision or the promise or the faith that God gives, it becomes our reality. It becomes our reality. This is where God wants you to get. Where what? He is showing you concerning yourself, what he, how he is leading you in the scripture. That seem like, man, I would never be that virtuous woman. You know, some people don't even see that. But that vision of yourself, keeping yourself pure and clean for God, God wants you to embrace it and move forward in faith. Even though you, you have a strong affection for John John right now. He wants you to embrace it. And then make that your confession. Because you see it for afar off. Hallelujah. That's the proof that you really have faith. Is that your confession changes. Your profession changes. You stop saying negative stuff about yourself. You, start, you stop saying what you see in the natural. You say what you see in the spirit. Or what God has said. Come on, y'all. We're talking about continuing in faith. Let's move on here. So, if we continue in faith, this prevents us from backsliding. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is good news. Continuing in faith prevents you from backsliding. Let's see it in the scripture. Verse 15, Hebrews 11. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they may have had opportunity to have returned. Y'all remember the children of Israel when they left Egypt? As soon as the trouble came, they started talking about onions. Now, I mean, some, you must have really been in the flesh. You're going to leave God for some onions. You hear me? You, you are in the flesh. They were they was so sick of their experience that they started looking back to Egypt. But you're looking at the onions and the leeks and all that. You forgot they was whooping your behind. You forgot uh, Uncle Juni died, you know, in the marsh pit making bricks. You forgot uh, they took your sister and made her a confectionery. You forgot all that. You see? And this is what can happen. This is how we backslide. Because the, our view is not, we're not looking at the thing that God gives us that's a far off. We're looking at the present situation. It was not better before you came to Christ. You know, you may be struggling financially now, but it wasn't bad when you was at, at, <coughs> at the casino. <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> it wasn't bad when you was at the casino. <coughs> Boy, that... <coughs> Excuse me. I'll tell you what that is. That's a distraction. <coughs> <coughs> because that's what the devil is trying to trick you with. You thought it was better Back then, when you had a New Year's champagne, you know, you was at the casino, 
You had June bugs showing up, paying your gas bill. You, it wasn't better. That is a lie. God wants you to see yourself in the image he's releasing by faith. Thank you, honey. <coughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against you know, coughing spirit, whatever it is, it's making me cough. I come against it in Jesus' name. I declare clarity of speech yes. to deal with people where they are. In the name of Jesus, amen. Name of Jesus. That's how you kill that. And so, when we have a continuing, when we're continuing in faith, it prevents us from backsliding. If they, had, if they had not looked forward, they had not looked forward. These people right here in verse number 15, they might have had opportunity to return to the land they came from. And I would never go back to being a fornicator. I would never go back to being a weed smoker. I will never go back to drinking beers, cussing and you know, are you that that land is a is a barren land. I have left that country. Amen. And I'm looking I'm looking for a city that is not made with hands, yeah. but is eternal in the heavens. I'm seeing myself being fashioned into a man that I couldn't make myself. Not this dummy back here. Never had insurance. Always ducking the police, taking side streets, because I didn't want to pay $67 in insurance. <laughs> I'm not going back to that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That is a lie from the devil. Yeah. And you said, my wife say, amen. 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 She had to bond me out one time. <laughs> <laughs> she know. I'm not going back to that. Laying back there. I'm continuing in faith. I will forever have insurance money. Hallelujah. Y'all playing. I'm not. I'm looking, man, I'm looking to another land. Yes. This is faith. Yes. Are you kidding me? I don't care if it's a world crisis. It's a, a what they call it, that inflation. So what? I'm on another economy. God is my provider. Yes. That's the economy I'm on. I always got gas in my car. When it was four dollars, now it's two sixty-five. I still got gas. That's right. Thank you, Lord. And insurance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Continuing in faith prevents backsliding. You want to know why you keep going back and forward? You don't have you don't have a vision of faith from God. Yes. Let me help you today. If you are on here and you are back and forward, you need to hear from God. Yes. Not about drinking. You need to hear from God about you prophesying. Yes. You need to hear about God from you living holy. You need to hear about God from you ministering. You need to hear about God from you leading your family to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Something out there. Yeah. Amen. Listen, it's sinners that don't drink. Oh, come on. It's sinners that don't get high. What you what? I know that I'm not minimizing your struggle. But what I'm saying, you can do that. Yeah. How about leading your family to Christ? How about doing that? Can you do that? It's going to take God. How about reaching a nation? Changing Wyandotte County? It's going to take God. Oh my God. All right, my time is running out. All right, now listen here. Let's go to verse 16. Now, they would have returned if they was not, if they was not, uh, uh, if they would have been mindful of the country they came from. See, don't meditate on the past. If, you know, your lights get ready to get cut off, don't meditate on how you used to get them on with June bugs. Go to God. See, listen, they're not mindful of the past. The past is in the past. I'm going forward with God if I die in a cold house. 
I'm going to be with God. Amen. To be man, say amen. <laughs> say amen to that. I'm going to die with God. I'm going to die trusting God. I'm going to be embarrassed trusting God. I mean, he's just going to have to just, he's just going to have to embarrass me. He's going to have to leave me out here and looking like a fool. I thought you said you was a prophet. Yeah, well, guess what? God said it. And so I'm just going to have to look like a fool because I'm not going to not say what he said. That's good. Period. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let me, let me wrap it up here. Okay. With time invested, faith changes your inner desires. See? Oh, my God. We need an hour today. With time invested, faith changes your inner desire. Let me read in verse 16. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly one, whereof God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. So when I put time with my faith, see, it's not as soon as God tell me, and I'm boom, I'm in it. It takes time. For the, what God has said to work on my thinking, to work on my heart, to work on my habits. See, I got to sometimes, you know, I have to slip up and make a mistake and realize what caused me to fall. Before I get the wisdom to avoid the pitfall. It takes time with faith. You know? You know, and I was talking about being a preacher. In these twenty some years of being a preacher, I have, I have failed. I have failed. I have sinned. Can you say that on a church monitor? I have sinned as a preacher. I'm talking about real sin. I ain't talking about you know a pack of bubblegum. Sin, blatant wrong sin. But it took. Me to get knocked upside the head and get corrected by God and be in repentance and crying and, and sorrowful, cry, depressed up under the bed to say, you know what? When that come again, I ain't going that way. I'm not going that way. That's the devil. I can see it clear. But it took time. And with time, my desires change. See here in verse 16, they desire a better country. Why? Because with time of reflecting on what God says, it begins to give you God's desire for you. It erases your desire for you, and you get God's desire. You know what I want to be? I want to be little Ron as a rapper, just the freestyle fanatic. And everybody just, you know, boy, just with me because I was just the freestyle man. I wanted that. And then God told me, guess what? Quit rapping. Whoa. For three years. This is way before I met Pastor B. Quit rapping. Because what? I had a fleshly, carnal, worldly desire. I'm going to bring that in Christ. But as God revealed to me the ministry behind the music, I don't care nothing about you knowing I can freestyle. Matter of fact, I want to give you a scripture. And I don't want the applause because I'm giving bars. I want your soul to be converted by the word of God and feel the power of the Holy Ghost through the confidence and anointing that I'm speaking with. Look. With time, it changes your desire. Faith changes your inner desire. Now, close right here, number six. A part of continuing in faith is successfully, oh, my God, we're going to pick up here next time. Successfully going through spiritual checkpoints. Now, we're going to start here next week, but I'm going to just say it to you. Because Abraham was told by God, give me Isaac. Now remember, he was moving in faith just to have the boy. And he reached a checkpoint where God said, okay, let me see where your faith is at. 
See, there is no way that you're going to continue in faith and God don't check your faith or test or prove your faith. But Father, we just thank you right there. As you desire for us to continue in faith, we pray earnestly you will help us. For the one that is back and forth, and then, you know, the casino, that's where it is at. That's the reign of word. The, the one that is going back and forth to that casino, God is saying, you need a word. That's why you keep going back to that casino. You need a vision from God. So I pray, God, today, you will convict the heart and that you will lead them to a place of prayer where they can hear from you. We bless you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Good night. Amen.